do whatever. Is he ever willing to work for that wage at that place? Yeah, this is what I... Great, you want to make some money in the restaurant business? Crepes. Is there a... That's the way to go. I mean, do that crepe, it costs like 25 cents. So now we're uh, at staff reports. Yes, Mr. Mayor and Council, uh, two items. First, um, I want to introduce uh, John Baker, who's here, uh, sat through your meeting tonight. John is a uh, intern for us. Um, he's working on some economic development ish issues as well as um, some other assignments that we've given him during the summer. He is a recent master's in public administration graduate from San Francisco State University. <laughs> and how long is John going to be with us? Um, well, the, certainly for the summer. Next week. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. see, see how long we can... We're, we're paying him so much that, uh, you know... <laughs> yeah, time and a half. <laughs> yeah, and a half. <laughs> um, just the inside joke is he, it's an unpaid internship, so... <laughs> uh, the second item is just to um, let you know that uh, we are um, projecting that we will have the draft environmental impact report for the Baylands out in um, in early September, and uh, that will be then uh, out for 120 days comment period. And so I would anticipate that the comment period will probably end sometime in uh, in January, and then we'll go from there. So that's the uh, two items I have. Early September. Okay. How how confident are you, Clay? I'm as confident as my community development director is. <laughs> he t he, I, I told, I put him on the spot today. I said, give me a time, but don't, you know, that you're, con that he's confident with. So he told me early September. Okay. All right. There we go. All right. Mayor council matters. Um, so we've been away for a while. So we've had some subcommittee, uh, meetings. Well, you and I met quite a few times. So. We have. Um, I think you kind of delineated a lot of it in your staff report. Yeah. You know? So, you know, about the uh, Caltrain, mm -hmm. um, you met with them, uh, Caltrain folks on uh, the signage, and um, um, both Cliff and I think that's a good idea <coughs> for, to bring it forward to the council. And uh, Is that Caltrain meeting has to do with economic development? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it'll generate uh, money for the. Uh, You're talking about the billboard, city. right? Billboard, yeah. Okay. Electronic yeah, billboard. Yeah. Okay. And, and and you know, I mean, it's you know, kind of twofold. One, it yeah. helps uh, provide a sustainable um, source of revenue for Caltrain. The other is it gives us uh, quite a bit of money. Yeah. Another Plus, one. Uh, we can also uh, advertise. Uh, that's part of you know whatever contract that we would do if this is something that, that we would want to do. Um, I mean, you could advertise the farmer's market or if we were going to do an event. Uh, yeah. The good part of it is it's not going to be any light noise for the community because it's kind of shielded with the mountain where they want to put it and that's, that's uh, probably the best part, you know. Yeah. Uh, also, the <coughs> new technology of billboard lights. Uh, you know, of course, when they come before the council, you'll you'll see it. It's um, you know, it's nothing like the one that was out at Candlestick. <laughs> Man, that thing would light up my bedroom. I mean, it was brutal. Yeah, that uh, These ones, they, they don't. Uh, you can turn the intensity. Yeah, uh, that that light pollution. It, you know, it's just uh, you've seen them. They're, they can regulate the intensity. Uh, yeah. What it is, they can regulate the intensity down at night time so that it doesn't. And why have they picked Brisbane for this? They're doing many, uh, um, Brisbane, uh, South San Francisco, San Mateo, and Redwood City. Is that correct? Yeah, just it's along the Cal Train corridor where they have public right of way. Yeah. And okay, but did, but this I is did. coming would come before the council. Oh, and oh yeah, yeah, it. absolutely. I'm just I, I must have missed the memo. No, I, it said it was in uh, Clay's uh, 
in a weekly report. Weekly report. Okay. Yeah. So are they doing it at the Berlin game uh, area? No, I think uh, you're correct. Of San Mateo, South San Francisco, Redwood City, and then I think there's a couple <coughs> in Clara County also. Yeah. So we, it's only being seen from Caltrain? No, no, no. No, no off the freeway. 101. You, you, it, it, it's on the Caltrain corridor in their right of way, but I think what they're trying to get is 101 um, car, traffic. car traffic. So how much they make and how much we make? They, um, what we, what they, based on what they have suggested as the, the business arrangement, which again is something we would have to agree to, um, they said that conservatively they anticipated around 150000 a year. For us. For us. And Them this, maybe, well, I don't know. The, yeah, the, this, this is... Um, Four or 500000 who knows. I, the, the number I got the last time we met with them was that they're trying to do about 20% of their structural deficit, which I think was $10 million. <laughs> So they're looking at maybe generating $2 million for all of these boards up and down the, 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 the two-county corridor. Well, the reason I'm asking is how much they're making, for example, from the Brisbane, and how much of it are we getting? Is that 20%? Are we getting 30%, well, the, 50%? Th th those are, I'm going to have them come and make a presentation to you on uh, August 27th, if that's the, the date that you uh, choose to meet next. And um, we'll have them prep to answer all those questions. Yeah, this is just an update for all of you. This is what was discussed in the yeah. meeting. And so um, and we thought it, it was uh, prudent just to, to mention it and then to, to have them come back. And our uh, other subcommittee, we met with the, um, <laughs> the owners of the current property of uh, where BWR is, and they indicated that they will be out by the end of December. But they also indicated that they're leased until 2014, till December. So they have 24 months, but they really can't do anything with it because VWR would own the lease and they would have that two-year option to sublease it or whatever. And uh, the guy is really reluctant to talk about doing anything, you know, or, or impeding on that. Because uh, he thinks that the fear that they would try and get out of the lease, and they may try and buy out of it or, or whatever, but you know. Um, but the thing is, they don't owe any debt whatsoever on that property, which is good. And so, you know, we talked about various things that they may be doing, but different options, you know, um, that we could do with the chamber, you know, ourselves, you know, aside from them. But he really doesn't have any access to the building, can't advertise it or do anything because uh, they would still own that, uh, own the lease for two years. And uh, then they also presented some futuristic stuff they wanted to look at, some plans, and we're looking at doing a campus type thing if they uh, decided to move forward with that, but all the financing would be in place, so they had a kind of a preliminary sketch and we just viewed it. And, Gave him some feedback. So, who are the owners? Lawrence uh, Freeman is the representative. Lawrence, of yeah, Lawrence Freeman. Freeman is the individual we've been dealing with. I can't remember the name of his company. Yeah, I mean, it, it, yeah, it was a, you know, it was a, 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 a reach out to to us to say that you know here's the status of the situation, and um, I mean they they would uh, they would prefer to have someone. You know, sign a lease today and rent out the building for 10 years or longer. I mean, that they're you know, very conservative, um, but they also know that they they need to keep their options open. Um, like Clark was saying, they can't aggressively try and get a new tenant in there because they want to keep collecting the money from VWR. So they're the a lease. local company, or what? Yeah, yes, they're local. local. Yeah, in the Bay Area. So okay. yeah, but they San Francisco. Uh, they've been around for a while, okay. so. But they've also uh, they've owned that building since almost the beginning. In case um, the you know the economy changes and market conditions are are, are um, as such, where uh, a company would want to put in a campus, uh, I think it was six buildings um, that they you know they would they'd like to present that to 
to the city as well as, as an option. So, um, but I, I don't think we'll see anything from them um, for a while. So we just thought we'd share that, that with you. But it was good. To, you know, it was actually a really good conversation. He was very pro Brisbane, and uh, you know, wanted to be a good partner uh, with the city. So that that was nice to see. So we left him with you know meeting on a, a semi annual basis, just kind of check in, update, and stuff like that, and see where every six months, you know, where we're at, where they're at. <laughs> okay. Good. Yeah. yeah. And then we also had the meeting with the um, the two by two. Oh yeah, yeah, with the uh, school board. Yes. And that um, the elementary school board. Yeah. Yes. BES. About. Brisbane um, School. Huh? About and what is the? Um, it was more focused on high school, actually. I mean, well, we did talk about the the things that we discussed in, during the budget hearing, and <laughs> they really didn't want to let loose of the field, you know, give up on the field. You know, but at the same time, you know what their budget budgetary constraints are. You know, say so they have a high high use of it. And, um, what was the other thing? Uh, we did talk about the crossing guard, and um, the, yeah, uh, we, we, yeah, and you know that's, that a, was, that's a discussion for us. But we were thinking that you know since uh, there hasn't was, been any accidents and we have a pretty stable person <coughs> doing the, the duties that maybe uh, we should leave it in, in place. <clears throat> One of the things they're going to look at though is, is, is maybe being able to help fund it through, uh, was it CCAG uh, funding? I think it is. We, we talked about that. Looking at getting some funding that would, uh, uh, I think it had to do with safe routes to school through CCAG, and that, uh, well, maybe you weren't part of that conversation. I, I, I hope that happens. Yeah. I don't think that they would do that, because then just imagine all the 21 school districts, and each school district would have average of, what, 10? Well, we don't know if it falls into that category, and that was something that they were going to research, so. But, you know, we kind of really kind of ended up coming to consensus that the, uh, but the guy there does really do a good job, and that because of the high traffic that goes through that, that it really is a safety issue, you know, of having, you know, because we talked about, Terry, when you were discussing, well, when we were kids, you know, you say, yeah, you know, and then, you know, everybody was saying, yeah, but then back then there was a hell of a lot less cars, too, because generally only one one car family. Now it's like, you know, 20 car families, and, and uh, Everybody drives once they turn 10 years old, so it seems that way anyway. Mm -hmm. and, and, and we, um, you know, like I was saying, uh, a lot of the conversation was about uh, unification and uh, the school district um, uh, is not interested in pursuing that route. Um, they gave their reasons and, you know, and, you know, we're council members, so we don't, we can't tell them what to do. Yeah, you know, this is their responsibility. And so that so. that's with Bayshore Elementary, no, or with the high school district. What, it's, what's unification well, you're talking you, about? You know, unification of the the school district as it is right now. So Brisbane, parts of South San Francisco, and um, including uh, the high school, the, and then including the part high of the uh, including the high school. Yeah, so, so K through that kind of unification. K through twelve yeah. unification. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So um, they opted, uh, yeah, they, they didn't want to go that route. Um, we did talk about the merge. They, they seem to be very keen on going in that direction, but they feel that they need more information. Merge with Bayshore. Yeah, Bayshore. I mean, they, they did the study, and, of course, the study was uh, not very uh, um, informative. <laughs> uh, so... Uh, they're waiting for more information to then uh, make a decision with that. Um, the high school group uh, was uh, in attendance. Charter high school. Charter high school group. And um, uh, they um, have uh, been approved by the Summit School to, uh, they, they're, they're, they've just finished writing their charter. They're taking the proper uh, steps 
to uh, go through the county process. And um, we'll see what, what happens with that. Um, I did reach out to Michael Barnes uh, to give the council an update on uh, the status of the charter school. And um, you see the one doing it, or you see all with uh, I think he's, or something? I think he's, he's the, the president group. of the yeah. the oh. nonprofit group. Oh, got it. So, um, so I, he um, he says he he will think about it. And um, we'll see if uh, if they they come before the council and give us that update and and yeah we'll we'll take it from there. I think that was it. Terry, do you have any meetings? Subcommittee meetings. <coughs> I had a BB CAG meeting. Okay. Um, oh yeah. <laughs> <coughs> BB CAG meeting was. Interesting. We got a report on the um, uh, Schlage Lock site and a report from the Water Resources Board on the Kinder Morgan tank farm. Um, I think the report on the Schlage site was interesting and it talked about um, how much more testing they need to do and, and that they're still in remediation. Um, the Kinder Morgan tank report was a little less um, easy to follow. Um, I think that I really need to see there was the the disc on what their re her report was based on because it was um, sort of hard to believe um, that there's no um, that that. The pollution level there is low and really doesn't need. The, she didn't seem very worried about the the amount of discharge from that site. Who is she? <coughs> you know, I never got a. She she actually worked for the water, <coughs> and and you're saying that the water board scope of the. Uh, the scope of the uh, uh, the order. Didn't include some things, and so uh, um, she's relatively new, new engineer for the water board. So there's some things that she maybe historically didn't know, and <coughs> I guess it had to do with MTBE. You know that uh, they had found that there's certain level level of contamination, you know, from the fueling station out there when California was adding MTBE in there, and, it, and it's a highly mobile. Uh, agent, aggressive agent. It's also, you know, high carcinogen was found out and that it goes towards groundwater and stuff. And so that they were finding some of it on surface water, but there was, that's where it was the concern and saying, well, yeah. <laughs> finding it on surface water after it rains means it's still present, you know. But they, uh, for some reason, don't have a high concern of that. So it was pretty, uh, Pretty interesting, you know. It was created a lot of uh, probably more questions than answers to update because then everybody and then you know how Brisbane is and this is kind of poor lady didn't know what to do. I mean, well, she answered pretty well actually. You know, I thought she handled it pretty well, huh? you know. But uh, she's just given the facts, you know. And she she did have a little bit of um, contention because the. Um, representative from the the landfill area was there, and so some of her uh, reports blame the runoff toxins on the landfill, which the the person from that portion UPC <laughs> UPC wanted to contest it, and this was a report, not a mm. hearing, so it was it. It did ask more questions than it answered. Is she coming back? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure when she's scheduled back. <laughs> all right. Um, okay, next up is designation of voting delegates and alternates for Leo California City's annual I thought we conference. did this. Yeah, why is this coming back? We thought because we didn't agree on it on who was going to 
So we tabled it because we needed to discuss it. Oh, I thought he wanted I, I, to go. I, Cliff said he was going, and I thought yeah. Ray was going, and yeah. then, uh, I was and going. that's it. And that's the voting delegates. Uh, bing, bing, bing. I'm not going. Yes, we got I'm it. not uh, going. Uh, huh? So. Mayor, Mayor Pro Tem, that's and then... That's what I understood. Then, really, that's it. I mean, it was really... No, nope. no, you're right. <laughs> so it, I'm yeah, not yeah. sure what happened. And I thought it was <laughs> no, because he had not signed up. He waited and he did it late because he he had not decided. <laughs> Thank you, Savvy. No, it was just <laughs> no. That's true. It wasn't. I didn't. I had. I had. Uh, I wanted to go all along, but now we got it settled and we're all good. So uh, let's see. Consider it's letter C. Consider setting dates for council meeting dates. Review list of issues coming out of the budget review process. I had some questions. Why don't we get staff report from? Okay. Life. So this is uh, in response to the conversation we had during the budget season, and a number of items that are all um, fiscally or, or related. Um, Proposal is to do a couple different workshops um, through the months of September and October, and then we have a couple items that will come back to the council in a regular session on the uh, 17th of um, of uh, September. Um, there's a couple items that are um, going to be studied in council subcommittees, and then of course you uh, had already referred the uh, Parks and Rec costing and fees to the uh, commission and uh, so they will be reviewing that and making recommendation back to the council sometime later this year <coughs> yeah all these dates look good for me um, except September 10th for me September 10th does not work for you no I'm wondering if you could do it on the 11th um, that would be a Tuesday at right because you have another day that is Tuesday Council Lee Strums. Nine one one. We we do, Stuart uh, indicates that the open space committee does have the meeting scheduled that evening. Um, For September eleven. Yeah, I mean. Okay, I can ask another question. Um, over here, you have August twenty seven. Does that mean August sixth and twentieth? We're not making it, we don't have any meeting in August? Right. There would be no meeting until August 27th. Okay, and then there was October 9th. Um, um, it says, is October 9th Monday? That's a Tuesday. Tuesday. Yeah. What happens to Monday, October It's a holiday. Columbus Day? Yes. That's a holiday? Yes. Okay, sorry. That September 10th is, I would not... I'll be out of the country um, the 24th, 1st, and 9th. Ooh. Uh, in September? Yes. Is it, okay, the 20th. 20th. September 24th, October 1st, and October 9th. I was assuming I would miss one meeting, um, not three. But. Okay. Uh. Well, we should do the same we did. Um, okay. For July. When do you go on vacation, Terry? I leave on September 21st and come back on October 13th. Okay, so we'll go to calendar and see how that works. Okay, so you make the 17th and... and I had assumed I'd be missing the, the one October meeting, not the two workshops. All right. Yep. So, um, I mean, we can just, we basically we can push the calendar back to latter part of October and into November. I think sure. that's fine. Sure. And then, um, so we won't do, correct me if I'm wrong here, but we would not do September 10th, <coughs> September 24th, or October 9th. Right. All right, now we could choose uh, alternative days to kind of work around your schedules well I mean I mean mine is that I'm gone for for three weeks and so 
that's a three week period that there's not really okay. moving dates well, for. Yeah, I was just thinking like maybe uh, you know it was a, a couple days after September 17th. Um, so you just you, you're talking about Clay just moving the workshop into November. The workshops right. because yeah, Steffi yeah. won't so be happy. here to the 10th and Terry won't be here to the 24th or right. 9th, but we could still have the regular meeting on October 1st. Right, because I, yeah, I was here the whole July. If I, I didn't go anywhere. If I miss a meeting, I. W what about having? Um, w what about taking the September 10th? That's why I said make it and, 11th. I'm and, okay. And make it uh, some other day before Terry leaves. Well, we could do the 12th, which would be Wednesday without conflicting with any other city meetings. So who's going to open space? Oh, yeah, two of you are going to open space. Right? No, nobody. It's just that Stuart's going to be there and open space and ecology has their meeting here. Yeah. It's you guys want to go to the 12th? That's okay. Okay. 12th's okay. fine. So we'll do... Wait, wait, wait. Before, I'm sorry. What are you? September 12th. <coughs> September 12th, Wednesday, September 12th. Right. September 12th. Yeah, I could do that. And then uh, September 24th, move it to November. And then uh, well, we could do we could do um, the second. Um, no, uh, Terry, use it. No, we we could do it October 22nd. Right. So we'll do September 24th will become October 22nd. Okay. And then October 9th would be? Actually, I think we've got a fifth Monday of October. 29th. So we could do the 29th. 29th. Of, of October. October. So the October 9th now becomes October 29th. 29th. October 1st stays as it. September 24th becomes October 22nd. So we'll do October... Right. So we'll be off October 9th, so we'll do four meetings in October. Yeah. Correct. Okay. Mm. Unless you want to move one of the Octobers to November. Mm -hmm. No, let's just do it. want to have a, a week a break. We should really get it done so we don't have to worry about November holidays and Thanksgiving. Yeah. Yeah. Then you get into yeah. I think it's better this way. Yeah. Go with this. Okay. We'll send out yeah. an update. Yeah, we'll we'll revise this and send it out. We're punch drunk, we'll let you know, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. Uh, okay, review proposed council meeting. Okay, we sort of good there. All communications. John, you're good. All right. <laughs> Done. All right. Can I have a motion to adjourn to the successor agency meeting? So moved. In, in oh, wait, wait. In, oh, in memory. Right. Yeah, sorry. Can you do that list? I just want to uh, okay. acknowledge. I'm going to adjourn in memory. Yeah. So adjourn in memory of Ray Nowakowski, uh, Ben Hodge, Tommy Gonzalez, and Dan. Thacker, oh, Don, and Don Th uh, Thacker. All right, so uh, I need a motion. We just did. Do we already just do it? Yeah. Oh, okay, I thought you Speed pulled it take. back. Yeah. Okay, all in favor? Had those names. Yeah, yeah. Aye. Okay. aye. Okay, good. All right. Excuse me. Motion to extend meeting for 11:30. Mayor, second. Meeting. All's in favor. Aye. 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 Yeah, let's go to 12. You know, we just have a lot of <laughs> Don't get carried away now. <laughs> Wrong answer. <laughs> Sorry, Betsy. <laughs> <laughs> Bob's over there going, thanks a lot, Lisa. <laughs> that's, what happened. that's what happens when you're second in charge. <laughs> you get delegated. <laughs>
<laughs> All right. So, roll call. There. Note for the record that all council members are present. Okay, good. All right. So new business. Consider adoption of the reorganized obligation payment schedule for the period of January through June 2013. Do we have a staff report? To yes, we do. Okay. That's it. It's our, our wonderful state legislature passed a redevelopment dissolution unwind trailer bill on June 27th which institutes a bunch of new things we get to do. One of them is that we must pass or submit the revised or the required recognized obligation payment schedule to the Department of Finance by September 1st and it has to go before the oversight board and must be approved by resolution from them before we can do that. Thus, we have to get this this organized or get this done. This is for the period of January 2013 to June of 2013. It's got the debt service payments on it that will be required to be paid by then. And the only new thing on it would be that we now have to have an let's see they call it a, a review. It's we must hire a licensed accountant who is experienced in local government to review our housing and our redevelopment things. Mm -hmm. And uh, that basically it's an audit. So we have estimated that it will probably cost about $10,000. The trick is finding an auditor who's willing to do it. Our current auditors have already said they prefer not to. We have <coughs> contacted the auditors who did the the understanding for the county that the audit that the county had to have done and they were looking into it and are supposed to get back to us this week. Um, some of the other things that AB 1484 gives us is that once we jump through all the hoops for, for the Department of Finance they will issue a finding of completion and once we have that in hand we can then take to the oversight board any loan agreements between the city and the agency and they might consider letting us collect on that in a very drawn out interesting formula. Mm -hmm. But in the meantime what we really need is, is the ROPS approved so that we can take it to the oversight board. Thank you, Patsy. So, some semantical stuff. I mean, it's AB1X, right? Not ABX1. AB1X26. It could be. I would have to look it up. <laughs> yeah, it is. Well, well the uh, latest one is AB1484, so. Yeah, and maybe what we want to do is carry that forward to on the spreadsheet because we have per AB26, and that's a totally okay. different. Uh, well, the this form was sent to us by the Department of Finance, so I'm assuming that they know what they're talking about. Really? <laughs> <laughs> you know what happens when you assume? <laughs> yes. <laughs> right. Especially about the department. Right, but you, yeah. wouldn't, you wouldn't want it kicked back because it wasn't on their form. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So if, if they're wrong, they will live with their their wrongness. They might kick kick it back because they're saying that, hey, your form's incorrect. You should yeah, well, it's from their website. Okay. All right. Well, you might want to do a cover letter. All right. Or at least look up AB26 and, you know, might have a total different meaning. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's, it's, yes. It's, we we uh, can footnote on this yeah. that it's for AB 1X. 1X 26. Mm-hmm. It's just my semantical clock. Yeah, no, I know. Good. <laughs> I have a uh, question, right. too, yeah. for me. Mm -hmm. um, I think we got this report from the city manager about some of the provisions of 1484. Yes. Uh, and it refers to what you were just saying about maybe we can actually get repayment of loans that we actually made mm -hmm. to the redevelopment agency, particularly, of course, the marina loan is the, mo the most substantial one. And, and then there's some kind of, as you said, 
complicated formula, which they will allow after they approve it, so forth and so on. <coughs> Could that all happen before January 1st, 2013? No. The reason I asked that you couldn't? No. I guess the reason I asked the question is, you know, suppose it could happen or there's some possibility that it might happen, then shouldn't it be on here? That's my question. Uh, so for AB 1484, you cannot start repaying yourself until fiscal year 2014. Okay. But based on what we have from the oversight committee previously, we left these items on this one without any repayment. Right. The formula for repayment is you can you can repay yourself based on collecting 50% of the growth and in increment between 2013-14 and 2012-13. However, 20% of that 50% would need to go to low mod housing. So you can imagine, and then the first mm -hmm. they of course wiped out. Well, but 1484 put it back in. So there, and the other thing that they that did. That doesn't make any sense to me. Well, uh, please no. explain. Cut. 1484 allows the the low mod housing, the successor agency low mod housing, which we have. Um, so that keeps the successor agency low mod housing intact. Also, you were already. Well, we had to distribute that money. Okay, I'm, we, I'm confused. Can I try this? Uh, okay. Sure. <laughs> what what they're going to do is they're going to go in and sweep the fund. Yeah. Okay, and so everything that we got in it is going to go, and yeah. it's going to go back to the underlying uh, agents, uh, entities. Okay. And then from then going forward, they kind of create this interesting formula of how you can start putting money back into it, in which case we will be able to keep that. So first they take it all away, and then they create a formula of going forward. Which in a subsequent year they'll take away again. Uh, well, um, maybe, maybe not. Because, I mean, I, I think the reason, I think... The, the reason this happened was, was as, as Senator Lee, no Leland Yee stated to us, that, um, which I think was, was spot on in terms of what's happened up there, is that they marked this bill up for whatever billions of dollars that they marked it up in the in, as a revenue in the state uh, budget. So they're gathering every dollar they can to make that mark. The, in the meantime, 1484 got lo uh, lo lobbied heavily by the affordable housing advocates in the state. And that's why I think you see this formula, this kind of arcane formula going forward that actually starts putting some money back into um, um, housing. So my guess is that will probably stick, at least for now, because um, they're feeling, you know, they're feeling that pressure as well. But it, it's 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 a goofy system to, at, at best, because I mean they're gonna, you know, take all the money away, you know, go into your bank account and take everything away from you, and then give you this kind of uh, strange formula where you can get money into the low mod housing fund based on mm -hmm. loans that were owed you, and then you have to take a certain percentage of that and put it into the into this fund. I mean, yeah. <laughs> They're hoping the world ends in 2012, right? <laughs> so. I, I think the one thing is just to, I, I think you can figure, I mean, you the sanity I get in this is trying to figure out what the politics of it were, because then I can understand what what we end up with. But in terms of you know lay person looking at it and saying, does this make any sense? Not a, not a lot. Okay, so none of that can happen until 2014. Is that yeah, what that's, you're saying? Yeah, that's what Stuart was talking about. Yeah. So that's why we don't have anything other than we just put them there as the obligation, but we don't have any payment. Right, and the first obligation we have to pay back. Is the is a loan to the low mod housing fund, uh -huh. which is a little which is right around a million dollars. Right. So that's the first payment that that's the first thing we have to pay back mm -hmm. before we can pay back the city's loans. So it's going to take that us a while. In the law? Hmm? Is that in the law? Yes. Okay. So it's going to take us a while to get to the point where we can pay back the city for the loans that that the city made to the redevelopment agency. Yeah. Right. Okay. The, the interesting quirk in this, though, is is that you know we had these payments due the city um, from the um, RDA two and from the Marina Fund, but we hadn't established a uh, repayment schedule. 
So now we're actually going to have a repayment schedule. Mm -hmm. Granted, it's going to be a very slow and long one to get to, but we will, you know, assuming we can get through the, pro the system and through the process and DOF ultimately approves it, we can book it as part of our uh, fund balances and we can have a repayment schedule that, uh, you know, we'll get paid at, at some point in time. And, you know, growth out at Sierra Point will help. Um, and then, of course, when the, the bonds get paid off and there's funds available to, uh, to repay the past loans, that's when it will probably take place, which is probably going to outlive all of us in terms yep. of our, <laughs> our tenures here. But at least yeah. it's something, you know, for the city down the line. Right. Okay. So then we should uh, move adoption of the recognized obligation payment schedule for January, June 2013. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Move adoption of um, the successor agency minutes of June 11th and June 18th, 2012. I have a second. <coughs> Yes. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. I want to abstain on the uh, 18th. Aye. Okay. You're abstaining on the 18th? Yeah, that was so wasn't you. Right, 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 right. Uh, do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. All those in favor? Oh, Aye. Second. Aye. Aye. Aye.